ಬರಲೇ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ಯುರ್ Okay, welcome to today's art lesson, senior students. Uh, today we are going to be following along with the same topic that we started last week, which was texture. So for those of you who maybe didn't join us last week or need a bit of revision, texture refers to the way that an object might feel. So an object could be rough or soft or bumpy or prickly. Um, so this week what I've done is I have gone for a walk outside and that is the first thing that we're going to do today. We're going to go for a walk outside and collect some things that uh, are going to help us to do our drawing. So I've done this already. Um, I collected a few things. A leaf, um, a piece of bark off the ground. Um, so you can see it's got kind of a bit of a rough surface. Um, and I've also got this uh, seed pod here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is put them aside and I'm going to set up my sketchbook. Uh, I'm going to grab a pencil and a pen and we're going to have a go at drawing these using as much detail um, as, as we possibly can. Um, and hopefully um, we can achieve something like this. Okay, so I've started today by going out and collecting a few things that I found uh, around the school. So I suggest that you do the same. Uh, just see what you can find. Smooth objects, rough objects, uh, stones, sticks, bark, leaves, um, anything of that description. So as always, I start my drawings by doing a pencil sketch lightly and then I usually go over this with something a bit darker, like a black pen. You can see here and you can pause at any point uh, that I like to use small marks to show as much detail as possible. So look at all the fine lines and veins in your leaf or bark or object. I mean ideally it would be great to look at it under a magnifying glass to see that kind of detail but because we don't have something like that just have a close-up look and see what you can see. So I found this uh, seed pod outside which I thought was really interesting because it has lots of different types of texture. So I've done a pencil sketch first and I've really concentrated on looking at the dark um, or what we call the negative space in between those seed pods. So I concentrate on that and that's what I'm, I'm kind of colouring in black at the moment. So again, look at the shadows, look at the darker, darker bits and the lighter bits and all of the detail. So there we have it, a seed pod, a leaf and a piece of bark. See what you can find and fill your page up with as much as you possibly can. Good morning. Hey, hey. Welcome back to your hour. Good morning, seniors. It is so good to have you here. So last week for our starter, you might remember we're talking about something called binary coding, the language of computers. Well, today we're gonna to explore that a little bit more. So we've got a few activities and a few uh, interesting explanations of how 
uh, quality works in different screens. Let's go take a look. All right, so to start off, we have a bit of a starter. I've got a picture of a house in Minecraft. Most of you would have played Minecraft here, and it's, the world is built in these little uh, squares or little cubes. So we're gonna quickly count how many cubes can you see? Let's take a look. So some of you might have counted more, some of you might have counted less. The idea was not to necessarily count how many you can see, but to get the idea that the world is broken up into these different cubes. And that is exactly how computers work. It's not just one solid image. So the first activity we want to do is the binary coding that we did last week. Ones and zeros. It's a coded message. Let's take a look. All right, guys, so let's take a look at this activity. This is a binary challenge. It's a message. Up top, you can see the message in the binary code, and at the bottom is the alphabet. Can you figure out what the code is? Well, let's figure out the first two letters. The first one is 0110100. If you look at the alphabet and you go along each letter, you will find that is a H, and you write H on the line. The second one is 011. 001011. And if you look at the alphabet, that is an E, and you write the E on the line. Can you figure out what is next? Now, one tricky one is on the end 00100000. That is a space between the words. Good luck, guys. See how you go. All right, fantastic, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed that activity and I'll see if you got it next week. So moving on, on the board here we've got a screen. It can be a phone, it can be a, a laptop or a TV, it doesn't quite matter. But 20 years ago, back when I was younger, our TVs weren't very good. They were huge, you dropped them on someone, you probably killed them, and the quality was terrible. But the way it worked was there were these tiny cubes, or squares really, and I can't draw straight lines, broken up in the screen. And within each square is the series of the ones and zeros that tell you what you're seeing, whether it's a person, a car, or a certain color. But as time moved on, our technology evolved. And we started to get different resolutions. It started with 100p, 360, 1050 was high definition, and now we have 4K. And that's as far as we've gotten. Now the 4K is a lot more squares than this, but this is just giving you an idea. So now, instead of those nine squares, I have so many more. And 4K is about 3,540 by, I think it's 1,460 little squares. And those little squares all have those series of ones and zeros. Now the more squares we have, the more sharp, the more clear the picture, and hence the higher resolution. So I've got two photos of Mr. T, if you remember who that is. One is blurry, and one is a crisp, sharp photo. Let's take a look at that quickly. All right, so hopefully you figured out the difference between the two. So why are we talking about binary coding, ones and zeros? You can say it's not very applicable in our daily life, and you will be correct. However, digital technologies is not just about the technology and the gadgets and the robots. It's about changing the way that you think. Binary coding is to get you outside of a particular box or a way of thinking and to get you start exploring other ways, thinking outside the box. That is the goal of this binary coding activity. So, moving on from here, we have another activity. It is designed to show you how a picture is made using the ones and zeros. So let's go take a look at that now. All right, so this is our second activity. What we're gonna be doing is we're going to be making a picture. And this will be the best example for you to see how 
a screen uses the ones and zeros to display an image for yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be making a picture or decoding what is actually there. So this is the binary coding for our picture. So I'm just going to quickly work this out so you guys can see. It goes by line, so left to right, top to bottom is a column, but we're working left to right. Always remember that. So to start off, zeros are a white square and ones we're going to colour in. So let's go. And as we see from the binary coding, we came out with a house. Told you. And everyone's laughing at my drawing. <laughs> but you have a different set of coding right here. Can you figure out what this coding is trying to tell you? Let's see. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And let's see what picture you come up with. All right, so we have covered the binary coding. We've covered our pixels and the quality of pictures and screens. So I hope you guys have absolutely enjoyed this lesson. It has been fantastic to be with you. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. You guys stay safe. I'll see you next time. Good morning. Hey, hey. Welcome back to your hour. Welcome back everyone to Urara to you. This is week four. I'm so excited to be with you all again, Year 10 Science. Last week, if you remember, we looked at the six steps to doing an experiment. Step one, we did our observation. We looked at some problem. Step two, we identified a problem we needed to solve. Step three, we did our hypothesis, which was our prediction, what we thought was gonna happen. Step four, we did tested it. We did the actual experiment. And step five, we wrote down our results. And step six, we concluded that socks dry quicker in the sun than inside a room. And why was the reason for that? Well, we recall that the sun had radiation and thermal conductivity, which caused the water to evaporate faster out of the sock than inside the room. Now, those words might be new to some of you. Thermal conductivity and radiation. Now, when I did the second experiment, I'll give you the results from that now. So I got the sock down off the roof and I noticed it dried within 30 minutes. So that's about five times faster than the one in the sun. And the one in the sun dried in two hours and five minutes because the sun was hotter. It was a hotter part of the day. So something changed, we can account for that. But why do you think the one on the roof dried faster. Well, first of all, we need to look at the material that goes on the roof. Now, the material on the roof is made out of metal. And what happens is the metal heats up in the sun, it gets really, really hot, very high temperature. And what it did was it fried and cooked the sock from underneath, as well as getting the sun from the top. So it dried really quickly. So tin is a material that heats up very fast. So if you want to cook, you want to use a, a fry pan made out of metal, or you can use a pot made out of metal. You wouldn't want to use wood because, or concrete because it would heat up a lot slower. So that's what we concluded from that experiment last week. Now today what we're looking at is the difference between renewable versus non-renewable resources. Now to describe that simply, a renewable resource is something that can be renewed. For example, energy from the sun in the form of heat and light we can use it to make energy we can cook our food we can get power from the sun which will 
look more into as well. So that can be renewed. That keeps on making energy. Whereas things come out of the ground that we use, once they've gone, they're gone. So for example, oil comes out of the ground to make petrol. When I'm filling up my car, I'm actually using a non-renewable, what we call fossil fuel. That might be a new word. Fossil fuels are fuels, think fossil, Fossils are old things, they're things that have been made over hundreds and hundreds of years. So oil is a product from the ground, it takes hundreds and hundreds of years to make, that's why it's called a fossil fuel. Now when fossil fuels burn, they're actually very bad for the environment. So solar and renewable energy is a lot cleaner, it's more environmentally sustainable than fuels such as coal, and wood and petrol. Because when we burn them, we're putting carbon into the air, which makes us all sick, blocks up our lungs, makes us very sick. So we're looking at making our resources cleaner and green. We're gonna look at how solar works this week, and you guys are gonna learn about the two different energy sources you can get from the sun. First one being conductive energy in the form of heat, and the second one being solar energy in the form of light. So we'll look at the two different types. What we're going to do now is go down to the swimming centre because they actually use both of those sources of energy to help make them a greener place. Let's go. Here we are at the Alice Springs Town Pool. Over to my right, you can see all of the solar panels. These panels convert light from the sun directly into usable electricity. So remember the light from the sun, not the heat. Now we're gonna go and check out another form of solar. All right, so to my left, we have what we call solar thermal water panels. Now what these do is they convert energy from the sun directly into heat, which heats up the water over in the swimming pool as it flows through the tubes. All right, here I am at the Alice Springs Saturdine Power Station. As you can see, we have a big tank full of diesel. The diesel goes to the generator. It gets converted into electricity. Now, it's not a very clean form of energy because it comes from the earth and therefore is considered a fossil fuel because diesel's made from oil. All right, behind me, you can see the actual generating plant and the diesel comes from where I was standing before, goes along these pipes to the generating station, which converts into usable power. So the fossil fuel, diesel, becomes usable power, which powers our homes in Alice Springs and other communities nearby. All right, over here we've got the battery. There's a giant battery, which we use for backup. Now, diesel is a combustible liquid, meaning that you need to make sure you don't smoke near it, you don't have any matches, and here's an emergency shutoff in case anything happens, so we don't want anyone getting hurt. We're going to go through the worksheet now in the booklets. You'll notice there are advantages and disadvantages from having renewable energy. Now today we talked about one renewable energy source. There are others, but we're talking about solar today. Now remember, solar has both thermal energy, which is heat, as well as light energy. Advantages of renewable energy Number one, at the top, you can see renewable energy sources will not run out, so they're always available when we need them, as we need them. Solar panels are cheap to maintain. Now, they're cheap once you install them, but the actual installation cost is usually in the thousands, so they're expensive to buy, but once you have them, they're quite cheap to maintain. Unused energy produced by households can be stored or in a battery or sold back to the grid. Renewable energy technologies could produce many jobs in the future. Now, I know a business in Adelaide that actually goes around cleaning the solar panels on the roof. Energy sources are clean and don't produce any harmful gas emissions, so no carbon monoxide. Due to a stable source of energy, we can use the 
energy on demand as we need it. Okay, so to summarize today's lesson, we looked at different forms of energy, that being renewable and non-renewable. We mainly focused on solar energy, which remember comes from the sun. So solar means energy coming from the sun. Now the solar energy can be in two different forms. It can be in heat, and it can also be in light energy. Now the light energy comes from, is produced by the solar panels, whereas the heat energy, anyone can access that with uh, very basic technology. So we'll be looking at learning how to build a solar oven in a few weeks. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, yeah, next week we'll look at some different forms of energy. Thanks for watching. Science, you are up to you. See you guys next time. Bye for now. Good morning. Hey, hey. Welcome back to your hour. it is to see you today. My name is Elizabeth, Miss Elizabeth, and I've come to bring Christian Studies lesson to you today. These are really tough times, so I thank you very much for showing up. And it is hard when we have family and other family that we're not sure how they are doing. But we pray that you will have, that you will be safe and that you have a safe return to your Rara College soon. Behind me, is the north facing side of our Urara Chapel and it has a beautiful cross and when we are inside we can look out on a day and see the beautiful air around us. Each morning we have chapel lessons and this is a time for us to remember God our Creator, Jesus our Saviour and our friend and the Holy Spirit who helps us to guide and live in the right way of living. Hello everyone from Urara College in Alice Springs, Northern Territory. It's good to talk with you and today I'm thinking of all the students and the Urara families everywhere in the NT and in APY lands and in Queensland, Dumachi side right up the Gulf Country, BLA, RDL, Catherine Way, Elliot, TC, and all out Western Desert, and out in the country, and everywhere, all over. And here at Urara College, we're thinking of everybody, and we're praying for all the families, especially in this time from the COVID, and we're praying that everybody is looking after each other and staying safe and thinking about staying strong and healthy. And so we say the blessing that we always say, the blessings of heaven, the blessings of earth, the blessings of sea and of sky on all we love this day and on every human family, the gifts of heaven, the gifts of earth, the gifts of sea and of sky, in the name of Christ who loves you. Amen. Bible verse this week. A voice from heaven said, This is my son, Jesus, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. Matthew 3 verse 17 The story of the Gospel of Jesus Today's story about Jesus Jesus comes to be baptized in the sacred river Jordan in his home country Israel. John the Baptist prepares the way, Matthew 3, 1 to 6. 
In those days John the Baptist came and preached in the desert of Judea. He said, Turn away from your sins. The kingdom of heaven has come. John is the one Isaiah the prophet had spoken about. The prophet said, A messenger is calling out in the desert. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made out of camel's hair. He had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea. They also came from the whole area around the Jordan River. When they confessed their sins and said sorry to God, John baptized them in the Jordan River. Jesus is baptized. Matthew three, thirteen to 17 Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River. He wanted to be baptized by John. But John tried to stop him. So he told Jesus, I need to be baptized by you. So why do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be this way for now. It is right for us to do this. It carries out God's holy plan. Then John agreed. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened. Jesus saw the Spirit of God coming down on him like a dove. A voice from heaven said, This is my Son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. Do. In your workbook, there are two things for us to do. The verse is to copy the Bible verse for the day. A voice from heaven said, This is my son, Jesus, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. Matthew 3 verse 17 And also you can write your prayer for today or say it out loud. My prayer for today. Heavenly Father, thank you for the world. Protect my family and country, my land. I am sorry for shouting. And my sins help me to stay strong and to live right. Be sure that you write your own prayer. Now let's look at the Bible work. Who was preaching in the desert? Verse 1. So in those days, John the Baptist came and preached in the desert of Judea. What kind of clothes did John wear and what did he eat? That's in verse 4. John's clothes were made out of camel's hair and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and honey. What did Jesus want John to do? Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River. He wanted to be baptized by John. Now if we look for verse 16, we can see that as soon as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water. And at that moment, heaven was opened. Jesus saw the Spirit of God coming down on him like a dove. And verse 17 is our Bible verse, isn't it? Our voice from heaven said, This is my Son, and I love him and I am well pleased. Things to do and things to think about. Read this story from a Bible in your language 
or share the story with someone. Think about or find out about baptisms in your community and are they the same or different from Jesus' baptism? God bless you. Comfort, comfort all my people with the comfort of my word. Speak it tender to my people, all your sins are taken away. Though your tears be rivers running, though your tears be an ocean full, though you cry with the hurt of living, comfort, comfort, every valley shall be lifted, every mountain shall be low, every rough place will be smoother, comfort, 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 comfort. They also came from the whole area around the Jordan River. When they confessed their sins and said sorry to God, John baptized them in the Jordan River. Jesus is baptized. Matthew 3, 13-17 Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River. He wanted to be baptized by John. But John tried to stop him, so he told Jesus, I need to be baptized by you, so why do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be this way for now. It is right for us to do this. It carries out God's holy plan. Then John agreed. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened. Jesus saw the Spirit of God coming down on him like a dove. A voice from heaven said, This is my Son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. Do in your workbook, there are two things for us to do. The verse is to copy the Bible verse for the day. A voice from heaven said, This is my son, Jesus, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. Matthew 3 verse 17 And also you can write your prayer for today or say it out loud. My prayer for today. Heavenly Father, thank you for the world. Protect my family and country, my land. I am sorry for shouting. And my sins help me to stay strong and to live right. Be sure that you write your own prayer. Now let's look at the Bible work. Who was preaching in the desert? Verse 1. So in those days John the Baptist came and preached in the desert of Judea. What kind of clothes did John wear and what did he eat? That's in verse 4. John's clothes were made out of camel's hair and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and honey. What did Jesus want John to do? Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River. He wanted to be baptised by John. Now if we look for verse 16, we can see that as soon as Jesus was baptised, he came up out of the water. And at that moment, heaven 
was opened. Jesus saw the Spirit of God coming down on him like a dove. In verse 17, is our Bible verse, isn't it? A voice from heaven said, This is my Son, and I love him, and I am well pleased. Things to do and things to think about. Read this story from a Bible in your language, or share the story with someone. Think about or find out about baptisms in your community, and are they the same or different from Jesus' baptism? God bless you. First things first, as soon as you pick up your guitar, you need to tune it. Uh, we talked about a clip-on tuner last time, which is one of these little fellas. And uh, very simple to use, just clip it onto the end of the guitar, the head, switch it on, and then we can start tuning. That's a bit too low, that needs to come up. Okay, that's in tune. Next string is an A. That needs to come up again as well. Okay, that's in tune. The next one is a D. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Next one is a G. Yeah, that needs to come up too. Remember, these tuning pegs on this side, they twist the opposite side, opposite way to the ones on the top there. So if it needs to come up, you twist it round to the right. Okay, that's in tune. Next one is a B. There we go. And the last one is E again. Right, okay. So, um, we're going to be looking at the chords A major, E major, D, and G today. So, uh, I think we looked at uh, A major last time, which is uh, squeezing three of your fingers all into the second fret. So, your index finger there on the D string, then your middle finger right underneath it, and then your ring finger right underneath that, so three in a row. And that's what that should sound like. All squeezed in between these two bars here into the second fret. Now the, the second chord we're looking at is an E major. So that involves your index finger on the first fret on the G, your middle finger on the second fret on the A, 
and then your ring finger right underneath that one on the D string in the second fret. And that should sound like this. Okay. Next chord is a D, which involves your index finger on the G in the second fret, your middle finger down on the E string on the second fret, and then your ring finger on the third fret on the B string. And then you strum it starting on the D string. You don't do the top two strings. You start on the D string. Now sometimes when you're doing the chord that only involves these thinner strings down here and these ones are open, you can, I mean, I don't think you're supposed to, but I do. You can kind of bend your thumb over just to mute those strings so that they don't ring out. Otherwise, it kind of sounds a bit out of tune and a bit messy. So if you mute it, you've got full movement of your strumming and you haven't got to worry about those strings spoiling the sound. Okay, and the last chord we're looking at today is a G, which involves your index finger on the second fret on the A, your middle finger on the third fret on the E, and then using your two other fingers down here on the bottom two strings in the third fret. Okay, so you're using all four of your fingers for this one. And that's what that one should sound like. Okay. Now the song we're going to be looking at today, you may, you may not be familiar with. It's, a, um, it's an old song from, from when I was a kid that I used to listen to. Uh, it's called um, It's a Shame About Ray by a band called Lemonheads and it's from way back in the early 90s but it's a great starting point for when you're learning these open chords. So um, the best way to start is to get used to the strum pattern. So, so get your A major chord ready, so the one that's three fingers in a row on the second fret and you can just mute that top string there with, with your thumb. And the strum pattern goes like this. And notice my hand is striking the strings at different times. So, so there's two going down and then the next one comes up. That's the pattern. And the tune goes like this. So you change from A major to E major to D. That's the first part of the song and it goes like this. So you play those three chords once. So. Second round, you hit the G. And back to the G again. Now this is uh, it might seem a bit difficult at first, but this is actually a song that I've taught in class at Urara to um, all, all different year levels, and um, most of the students have actually managed to accomplish playing this. So it can be done quite quickly. All you need to do is just start very slowly and just practice changing between chords. So, so when you change, you can kind of take all your fingers off and position them, go back down again. So you get that one one hit of all the strings open, so. And that gives you a chance just to get your fingers in the correct position. And, uh, and that about does it for today. So keep practicing. So that's A major, E major, D major, and G. So I'll play that through one more time for you.
that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again next time. Good morning. Hey, hey, getting closer every day. Welcome back to your hour. Hi, I'm Steve Silva and I'm proud to be sharing with you this exclusive NIDOC special this week. Our Language Matters is the theme for NIDOC this year. You are celebrated our indigenous languages by inviting special guests and other schools for an afternoon of festivities. Senior student Christella Campbell opened the ceremony wonderfully and thanked our special guests. I am from Robinson River community and my people's language is Garawa. I'd like to thank you all for coming and helping us celebrate our languages matter week. The ceremony was then handed over to Aranda traditional owner, Mr. Peter Wallace, for a welcome to country. That's what I Aranda. I talked in English before. Thank you very much, Ibron. Thank you. A special smoking ceremony was then held by an Aranda woman, Amelia Turner. We're going to do a little bit of smoking to whoever wants to come up to get smoked, especially the students in at Urara. And I'm, and I'm really glad that smoking is done today to keep the students calm and also the teachers who work within the students and that's a part of the, the education. It was great to see our teachers, students, guests and visiting school students take part in the ceremony. The smoking ceremony is a cultural welcome to this country. It was a real surprise to see the your staff and student band rocket on stage. Miss Elise and team really got the party started. It was also great to see Mr. Craig, Mr. Tom, Mr. Sai, and Elijah in their element. Another great performance by Centralian Senior School Band, Juice, the hip hop group performed for originals. He's young and ambitious, had his eyes on his visions like a hook on ballistic. To him, a natural mystic, refused to have his visions in prison. Rain no blue skies, he didn't give us stuff about the conditions. Life a window, and he would fly away with the pigeons. Nothing was impossible, yeah, it was gonna be a mission. It was a life Juice like will movies. head up no to perform at the Darwin Beat Festival next week, and we wish them luck. It was great to see our staff and students feed the hungry crowd. After lunch, our reporters asked our guests why language is important. What's language meant to? Our language is very strong and, you know, we like to teach our children. I've, um, I've got... I speak seven languages and 
I like to see other kids learn other languages and it's very important to learn languages and to keep their culture strong and share the languages. Your language means where you come from and where, what, what um, sort of culture you grew up in. Language means to me identity, um, my culture and family. Plenty of activities kept the students entertained. There was a photo booth and face painting. Miss Sandra ran a ceramics class. Mr. Carl and Miss Roxanne kept the students' heart rate up with volleyball and Aboriginal target game Kabuchi. <laughs> our reporters received great feedback from many of our um, guests. What's, what's been the highlight for today? Oh, it's um, good, enjoyable to come to college and look what's going on for the college night up day. What have you learned today? Um, we learned about the smoking ceremony and drumming. We did drumming and it was really fun to interact with the other Aboriginal kids. And the kids doing that different activities. I've really enjoyed listening to the music. That's been pretty awesome. But yeah, it's been fun hanging out here with Katie and making popcorn and watching the film loop. So yeah, it's been great. And what's the highlight for today? For me, the highlight today um, would be seeing all the smiles on everybody's faces. And also the cupcakes are really yummy too. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Danielle. The afternoon was a real success. And we thank all of those involved in the preparation and clean up and we look forward to next year's celebrations. As part of our seniors language assessment task, we created this video with the help of students and staff. It shares the variety of Aboriginal languages spoken at this school. Let's have a look. Hello, my name is Kerry. I come from Elikran community. I speak Walpuri and Western Naranda. I want to share a word in Western Arada. Wada means hello. Hello, my name is Silvani. I come from American community. I speak Wadfi and I want to share a word in my language. Ngochu means good. Hello, my name is Penny. I come from Fink community. I speak Yangunjari language. I want to share in my language. Palya means good. Hello, my name is Shawa. I come from Hemiswick community. I speak Western Aranda language. I want to share a word in my language. Mara means good. Hello, my name is Lashwis Hall. I come from Minyari community. I speak Creole. I want to share a word in my language. Guroi means good. Hello, my name is Kieran James. I come from Basswick community. I want to share a word in my language. Good follow-a is mean good way. Hello, my name is Derek. I'm from Minyari community. I speak Creole. I want to share a word in my language. Good bindi, it's mean huh? Good feeling and happy Nairok day. <coughs> We want to share a word with you from the top end. Yo, mind map means everything is good. Hello, my name is Lucasta. My name is Costella. We are from Robertson River community. We speak our language. We want to share a word in my language. Bariwa means goodbye. Goodbye. 
Hello, my name is Ernest. I come from Popona Kimurde. I speak Lucha. You mean, yes. Hello, my name is Courtney. I come from Pine Creek. I speak Kinwingu. I want to share a word in my language. Bobo means goodbye. Hello, my name is Joella. And I'm Tamika. We, we come, come from Tara community. We, we speak Ayala. We want to share a word in our language. Mora means good. Hello, my name is Kiana. And I'm Shawan. We come from MS Berenaria community. We speak Western Aranda language. We want to share a word in our language. Mora means country. I'm Steve Silva, and my language we say, Yo, mind mark, goodbye.